All right, so we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR. We're going to try a little, or actually a very handy little tool for uh, Steam VR called Reality Mixer. Now, some of you are probably already familiar with using mixed reality uh, for a flight simulator and how that can actually improve your experience. Some of you have probably seen the very high-end Vario XR3 headset, for example, that has the pass-through cameras. And those pass-through cameras allows you to inject video in certain parts of your virtual experience, which in something like a flight simulator is extremely useful because then you can bring real things into the simulator, such as charts or checklists, notepads, it's just a very, very good way to, to bring something real into the virtual experience. Or even just to get more spatial awareness where your flight controllers are. I haven't tried the XR3, so I don't know how that experience is. But there is actually now an alternative called Reality Mixer, which makes use of the pass-through cameras from lower-end headsets. So, we'll check it out. So, I'm going to jump into the CMVR dashboard, and we're going to... If you have it installed, you'll have this Reality Mixer icon down here. If I click it, you're greeted with this welcoming window, explaining you how to use it and such. First of all, you need to enable it, so there's a button over here, just hit Enable. And I think by default it's going to just give you a default box. But you can see that you have a couple of presets here. You have General Purpose, A and B, Cockpit, Floor Viewer, Lab Viewer. I believe that all of these can be configured the same way, but these are just presets specifically for these ones. I believe that the one I use right now was based on the cockpit. But once again, you can configure these however you want them. And if I go out of the dashboard a little bit, you can see that it's already there. Oh, that's passed through video, right? But I want to configure it a little bit. so. I can hit edit camera boxes and now using the controller I can actually use the grip to move the box around in 3D space wherever I want it. I want it to be kind of here in the middle so I can see my flight stick and my rudder pedals and my throttle quadrant over there as well as my holder's throttle over there and obviously my hands. So this is a, I think this one is a good, I can hold the hold the grip once again to move it and to rotate it. And if I want to extend the box, I can use the trigger and drag the box up and down in the direction that I want it to extend to. And that's how you position it. And you can also add more boxes if you need specific places. If I go out of this, and I go back into the menu and add another box. You can see we have another box over here that I can move around and you can see, oh, this is my room now. I can even see my, that's my base station over there. That's extremely handy. I can just put that box over there if I want to. And you can also edit these boxes using the keyboard. But because my keyboard is all the way over there, which you probably can't see because the menu is in the way, so I'll move that menu over there. But my computer is all the way over there, and so is my keyboard. I have no keyboard on this motion sim rig that I'm using. So for me to use a controller is the most handy. I also use this controller here for motion compensation, which means it's going to be mounted in place. I need to enable that after I finish Reality Mixer. But once you have placed the boxes where you want them in 3D space, you don't really need to mess, mess around with them anymore. So I'm just going to delete that small box, but I don't need it. And we'll just position this one again. Okay, so I, I'm I'm happy for now with uh, with kind of that view. If I go into the because now I'm editing this specific box, there are a couple of settings that I can use. These ones I can level the box. See if that helps. Yeah, that leveled it just to make it straight. That's kind of good. You can also attach it to a track device. So if I wanted to, I could attach it to my controller. Let's see what that looks like. And do knuckles right, attach, 
and now it's attached to my controller like this which is not really something that I want because uh, once again I want to use this controller for motion compensation but you have the ability if you want to and I can talk about a bit a little bit later how that could be useful to go to the next page we have a couple of options that we can act activate it by proximity so if we're close to it it can either fade out or fade in and that can be either if it's close to the headset or the controllers it can also be activated by gaze angles so if you're looking down on it it can be then activated or deactivated based on what you need and then you can also activate it with a button either on your VR controller or your peripherals and finally you have some opacity settings you can see right now it's kind of see-through right because I can still see the virtual stick even though I can also see my real stick and I could make this 100% opaque on both which is also pretty cool but now I can't see my virtual view underneath anymore and that could be a problem if the box is on top of something you need to interact with if there's a button or something down there that I actually want to see or a panel then I need this to be a little bit transparent so I'll set this to 85 and maybe 75 yeah that looks good because that I can see I can see both the real thing and I can also see the virtual ones that's my kind of hard time seeing the uh, Hoda stick over here but this also depends on the lighting in your room right now it's pretty dark because it's uh, late evening during the day it's much clearer the video is much clearer but anyway I'm happy now with uh, what that looks like so I can just uh, exit edit mode and I'm going to mount down my controller now so I can use this for motion compensation like so so I need to go into the menu again go to motion compensation select my controller enable motion compensation and apply and that jump means we are motion compensated great okay so let's do a little demonstration of how this works now that we have reality mixer enabled I can I think this is really cool just seeing something like this just having spatial awareness I can see where my flight stick is my hodas is kind of hard to see because the lighting is not that good right now but I can see my mouse my trackball mouse which is over here so I can interact with things I also have my throttle quadrant over here and my GPS unit over here but okay so let's do a little flight and see how well this works in the air but before that, because I'm using a motion sim, I'm going to have to wear my seat belt. And because I have reality mixer enabled, I can actually see what I'm doing, which is extremely handy. So, I'm just gonna fasten my seat belt. Oh, it was locked in place. There we go. And I also need to put on my my shoulder harnesses. And you can actually see me doing that. How lucky are you? So that's my shoulder harnesses on the left and the right. There we go. And I guess it's kind of hard to see right now because it's so dark, but hopefully it comes across good on the video. So, just going to get the shoulder harness in there and tighten the straps like this. And we're strapped in tight, so let's go for a flight. We don't need any flaps today. The cub is going to get in the air in no time because it's a cub. So let's go, shall we? And see how well this is going to be in the air. And we'll demonstrate some useful parts with Reality Mixer. And I'll also talk about upcoming features in the future. But let's just concentrate on the takeoff now so I don't mess it up. Because this is a very short grass strip. And we took off in no time at all because this is a Piper Cup and it's great right so now we are in the air I can probably speed up a little bit <laughs> almost stalling there but yeah this is pretty great as you can see we are climbing out and I can see my hands and my stick 
So we're just going to level out here. I'm going to take my power down a little bit. And we're going to trim our aircraft for level flight. It's a bit bit of turbulence today. I can feel that in my rudder pedals and my sim rig. But we'll see if we can just stabilize it right now so we can start talking about stuff. Okay, so now with Reality Mixer enabled and my airplane being more or less stable, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, since I can actually see something. I have, for example, a bottle down there. Okay, so let's have a little drink. So, and I could do that all without actually taking off the headset or looking underneath it to see where my my hands are and where this bottle is. So that's pretty cool. The other thing I can do is to well so getting spatial awareness using this is really cool. But now I'd like to talk about what or how this compares to like something like the Vario XR3 or more correctly how it doesn't compare because the most glaring issue with these cameras on my headset which is the Valve Index is that the quality is not nearly good enough for it to be useful for something like reading text so for example if I was on VATSIM and I need to get my clearance from my controller I have this notepad and I want to write down my clearance so I can uh, read it back to the controller. You can't really read it that well, right? Because the cameras, the resolution on the cameras are not very great. I mean, they're not really meant to do this stuff. They were just meant to kind of get your spatial awareness uh, so that you bu don't bump into things. That's the whole point of the pass-through cameras. But for something like this, you can't really read it. And that's where I believe something like the, the Vario XR3 really shines because it, they claim to have human eye resolution for the cameras so you can actually read something like this or you could have a, a physical checklist, a physical chart and that would be great. For something like this that's not really going to work. So it's not going to give you all the benefits of something like a headset that has high resolution pass-through cameras yet. And what I mean by that is that right now it's using the pass-through cameras on the headset but I have actually been told by the developer of Reality Mixer that the ability to to actually use an external camera will be supported in the future. Which means that, oh, it's, oh, it's a lot of turbulence here. If you have a high resolution web camera, you can actually use that for the pass-through instead. And if that has higher resolution than this, then you might be able to read text or read checklists or anything like that. That's an upcoming feature that is not out yet, so I haven't been able to test that yet. But if that works, then this is going to be even more useful. Oh shit, it's, it's actually very bumpy up here. And this is just the default uh, preset with a with, uh, few clouds. I guess it's because I'm flying over some small mountains. They're probably generating a little bit of unstable air up here. But anyway... So while I'm flying here, and I've kind of talked about what you can do with this and what you can't do. This is still in early access, which means all the features have not been released yet. But there are a couple of upcoming features that I think will be really cool. One of them being chroma keying. So that you, if you have a green screen, you can actually mask out your peripherals if you have that in front of your peripherals. So you don't really need to have a semi-transparent box like this. You can actually start to mask things out. How well that's going to work, it's going to depend on the cameras. And it's probably also going to depend on your light lighting, right? Because you're, you're doing chroma keying. But I'm very excited for uh, external cameras to be supported. Because I want to see how well that resolution is going to be compared to this. And that's one of the, uh, the drawbacks with this app. It will support the Valve Index, which I'm using. 
It will support the HTC Vive and the Vive Pro, and I believe all the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. And the reason why it doesn't support something like the Quest is because it can only support... Oh my, that's beautiful. Sorry. It can only support headsets that allows a third party to access the, uh, the pass-through cameras. And unfortunately, you can't do that on uh, the Quest 2, I believe. So that's not going to be supported. But another catch is that there is no reason to believe that the pass-through cameras on the Quest, Quest is like any better than this. And I believe that some of the cameras on the Mixed Reality headsets are actually monochrome, so you don't even have color. So once again, I'm very excited to see if external cameras can actually make, make this more useful and actually give you higher resolution inside a Reality Mixer, but time will tell. When that feature is out, I, I will test that and demonstrate it. Um, yeah, so, so there's that. Very cool little app. But, I mean, once again, you won't be able to read anything. But the potential this has for the future, right now, it's very good just to get spatial awareness, seeing your hands and seeing your flight controllers. But in the future, once again, you can type down instructions using notepads. Or if you have a tablet, you could probably use that to have your checklist, your flight tracker and everything. You could use that on uh, with this reality mixer. Whoa, 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 it's, it's very bumpy up here. I think I'm, I'm gonna land. And uh, hopefully, I won't screw it up. Alright, we're at left base. Alright, let's turn final. It's looking good, everything is looking good. Final stage of flaps. It is final stage of flaps, okay. Okay, we're a little bit fast. Let's get that speed down. Try to not screw up the landing too much. I'm gonna shut up. I'll do this. Okay. Here we go, that wasn't so bad. And I can tell because, uh, once again, I'm using a motion simulator, so if I would have felt that if that was really bad. But I only felt a slight little bump. So, very happy with that landing. It wasn't too bad. Okay, so let's park up our aircraft over here, shut down, and, uh, and close. Very nice little uh, grassy strip here. We are currently in Norway right now okay and here we are let's uh, shut off the engine here we go and we have that annoying little jump that you always get when you shut down the airplane in VR I Asobo please fix this it's really annoying but yeah that's reality mixer so, let's take off the seatbelt, have another victory drink since we survived the, this trip. And I hope that you uh, got inspired to try this out. Once again, if you want to try out Reality Mixer, check the description below. And I hope you have fun with it. Alright, bye for now.